call the June 13th Madison City Council um, meet, meeting to order, please. And we have uh, Pastor J.C. Uh, Hop, Hop, Hopkins with Cornerstone Word of Life Church here. Yes, sir. You going to lead us in prayer? It's perfect. Yes, sir. Right. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to say a quick prayer to start it off. Absolutely. Bow your heads. Um, Lord, you commanded us in 1 Timothy 2, Lord, to pray for kings and all who are in authority. So, Lord, I pray for every council member that that they will receive your wisdom to make wise decisions. Lord, help help them to listen with understanding. Lord, I pray that they will be excellent stewards, Lord, over their authority, have over their authority, having the opportunity to serve the people of our city. Guide them to be the leaders of that the people need. I pray that we come to know that it is the community and the board members' responsibility to serve the common good of all. Grant the community and the board members wisdom and courage to know and to do what is right and good and true. I pray that unity prevail in this community. Help us all together to resolve issues that affect us all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Would you join me in the pledge? Pledge allegiance to the flag. Liberty and justice for all. Can I get the roll call, please? Mayor Finley? Here. Council Member Robleski? Here. Council Member Spears? Here. Council Member Powell? Here. Council Member Shaw? Here. Council Member Bartlett? Here. Council Member Denzine? Here. Council Member Seifert? Looks like we have a quorum, so we'll move forward. Um, I think there's only one change that I know of tonight on. Um, the public hearings B, instead of 133 Amsterdam Place, is zero Amsterdam Place. Any other cha changes need to be made? If not, we'll move with what's printed, and I'm going to ask for approval of minutes to the May 23rd meeting. Move to approve. Second. Motion is second. Is there any discussion? If not, if not, can I get the vote, please? Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seifert? And motion passes. There's no presentation um, or awards tonight. We'll move into public co comments. Thank you all. I'm Angela Davis Gary. And first of all, I'd like to say, as I spoke to Chief Bailey when I first entered the room, I am very sorry to hear about the fire that took the life of one of our citizens earlier today. And I express my condolences to her, her family and to everyone that was affected by that fire. And I hope as a city we will get behind all of those people that are home, without homes, without what they need to function in life, and let's really show them the love that they deserve from the other citizens around us. We can do that. No other place, no other church, nobody needs to do that but the city of Madison. So let's please do that. I've got to talk fast because that's how y'all like it, I think. Um, I have a question, but I have to make statements, and so, you know, you just feel free to jump in whenever you want to. We had a audit review given to us by Warren Averett that said that the city's finances were in good shape. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. You all agree with that? I've talked to Mayor Finley, and we've been over that 52 times. We received the ball course payment in full, but late. Is that correct? Is that how I understand that? No. This year? I'm sorry? Are you talking about last year or this year? I'm just talking about 
this year has been this year um, was on time and everything that they okay. are up to date. Okay, up so to last payments. year when you got like part piecemeal or what the best they could do. Just make sure because if you ask your questions, because you're going to lose your time, and then I can answer every question you have. But yes, ma'am. Well, okay. I just want to know if we did we charge a late fee for them not paying late. No. Why did we not? I think we chose to be happy that we got what we did and move into this year, which was extremely success successful, and then we'll get into more Trash Panda stuff down the road as far as how they continue okay. to build off of that. Um, was it written into the contract that there would be no late fees? Megan? Did we, first, did we charge any late fees to Ball Corps on any of that, which I can't remember, I don't think we did. No, and, and then was it written into the contract that we could or couldn't? In 2020, the city chose not to pursue that course of action given the COVID experience and the fact that so much of the season was um, delayed and truncated um, due to the pandemic. So we okay. could have, but we didn't because we chose not to based on factors like that. I believe that we had some provisions for interest expense on late payments, um, and I would have to review the contract to be sure. Um, but that year, the city chose not to okay. pursue that option. President Shaw, my time is up. There has been a, uh, a case a couple of about a month ago where a citizen spoke and she went over her time limit and the conversation carried on. And so I'm going to ask for your permission tonight to overlook this one last yes, item. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. The consent agenda and finance committee reports contains a lot of valuable information that if you don't really study it, it can just be really looked up, it can just be looked over. I mean, you just glaze over it because you just go, oh, consent and agenda, whatever. And I started attending finance committee meetings and I have learned so much and I'd like to thank Ms. Bartlett for that. She's taught me worlds of things or I just learned at her feet. Um, I know this may surprise one of you, but not the rest of you, that every day, of my life, I get up and I Google Madison, Alabama. You would not believe the things that come up when you Google Madison, Alabama. One of the things that I found in Googling Madison, Alabama was that on June the 7th at the city council meeting in Virginia Beach, Virginia, that the council voted there 11 to 0 to unanimously provide um, the police, the three police departments that requested it because they said, and Madison was one of them, to get six of these um, sage, ace, le less lethal deployment devices in 2022. The police departments for these political subdivisions have indicated that they do not have the budgetary capacity to purchase such devices. These devices that we will be getting are 25 years old. Some of our police officers are not 25 years old. If we need those devices, is there no way we can get what we need up front instead of getting antiques? 25 years makes them antique. And they say that they have the normal wear and tear even though they've been taken care of as best they could. 25 years is a long time. Do you all see anything? I mean, everybody's just like staring at me blankly. Am I the only one that thinks that that we might not could, instead of, we need to get grants for things, and there's something in the consent agenda for a grant to get bulletproof vests. Yes, dear Heavenly Father, let's get bullet, 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 excuse me, bulletproof vests for everyone. We don't want to lose anyone, not by fire, not by whatever. But we need to seek grants for other things. And if we don't have a money problem, why are we getting 25 year old equipment? I don't get it. Uh, each, one of those, each one of the departments man manages their budget. And so they're the ones that dictate what they will or won't be able to utilize based on what they have in their budget and is already in there. So you're asking us a question, they manage it themselves. Yeah, but you're the daddy of the city, and you can say yes or no. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> fair enough. Thank you, Ms. Gary. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, that's not an answer, Mr. Finley, and we both know it. And um, when, how do we go about accepting those, um, when they come in? I mean, they get shipped in and, and just handed out, or what do we do? Uh, the police hand, I don't know what we yeah. do with that. But we can talk about this after, then. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Mike Allen, can you stay after and talk to me about that, please? I have a little bit of information to add, if I could offer okay. that. Um, Chief will be proposing those for acceptance on the next consent agenda, and so that will be a topic at the next Finance Committee meeting. Okay, but I also am supposed to talk to my representative of the uh, Citizens Advisory Board, and I don't see him here tonight, so I do have him. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else like to address mayor and council tonight? Yeah. Uh, I'm thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you for the extra time, Mr. Yes, ma'am. I'm Woody Sanderson, Huntsville, Alabama, and I think I, I know most of you. I've had the, the pleasure of uh, serving uh, as your city attorney. Uh, almost 25 years ago, which makes me an antique, I guess, by the definition <laughs> you just heard. Um, but uh, I wanted, I, I felt like I shouldn't let this evening pass without uh, recognizing and, uh, and with great appreciation the work that I've seen over the last several years from uh, your city attorney, who will unfortunately be leaving you. Uh, I've had the great honor of, of working with her regularly in my capacity of working with the, as a school board attorney and, and for Madison Utilities. And uh, I can safely say I think that she's the best city attorney you've had in at least 20 years and probably significantly longer than that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I want to just call to uh, express my appreciation to Megan and wish her well and, uh, and wish you well in trying to find somebody to fill her shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll certainly look forward to working with, uh, with your next city attorney, uh, hoping that uh, he or she is, is, uh, is, is competent and professional and has the uh, integrity that, that uh, Megan has demonstrated for you over these last several years. Mm -hmm. And I uh, appreciate the opportunity to just come by and, and share that with you and, uh, and again, wish Megan well in her future endeavors. Yes, Thanks, sir. Woody. Yep. Thank you. Yep. I think we all unanimously agree with that. So, so, Mr. Cole, are, are you wanting to, to address council now? Yes, sir, come, come on. I understand I have, my name is John Cole. This is my wife, Michelle Cole. We live at 1070 Browns Ferry Road. We moved here in June of 2019. Since that time, we've had three accidents in front of our house. Four. Correction, four, as of this afternoon, about, what, 3 o'clock? Here are the pictures. So number one, that was September 2019. Number two, October 2019. Number three, Christmas Eve morning 2019. Number, this was my daughter's three weeks ago at the intersection of Moe's Chapel and Browns Ferry Road. This is number five. This was this afternoon at three o'clock. Other than my daughters, they keep hitting that culvert bridge to the left of our house, which is just west of our house. The speed limit, people are not paying attention to the speed limit. Um, we are out there constantly with our daughters, walking our dogs, and to see the cars fly by, they pay no regard to the 40 mile an hour speed limit. Um, after speaking with some of the police officers this afternoon, I found that that stretch of land, they told me, is not deemed residential. It's, um, therefore, there's not much that they can do. There's no safe place for them to stake out in order to try to eliminate some of this problem. So we are coming requesting some sort of safety review 
Um, we're lucky that nobody has had a fatality in our yard or the two yards next to us, but that stretch between the Colvert Bridge and then the curve that goes past Moe's Chapel. To Balch Road. To uh, Balch, yeah. Balch, yeah. They use that as um, a speedway mm -hmm. to take those curves to see how they can maneuver as quickly as they can, um, especially the motorcycles. Um, not to mention the large, there was a large semi this morning coming through that section where that road is just not wide enough right. to accommodate that. Additionally, on Mose Chapel Road the next day, on May 27th, the day after my daughter's accident there at the intersection of Mose Chapel and Browns Ferry, I was coming up for a Mill Creek school. I wasn't even a quarter mile down that road. That road's barely a mile long. An orange Dodge Challenger flew past me at least 60 mile an hour. I was doing, I wasn't even, I didn't even hit the speed limit of 30. I followed him from a safe distance trying to get his license plate. I did call it in to the police department. Uh, I have talked to the police at these accidents, including my daughter's accident, and I said, what needs to be done? They said, go to the city council. We have talked to the city, we've talked to the police, we've talked to our advice to the city council, and nothing's been done. And Mr. Shaw, you said, you told me today, well, we've got an engineering and all this other kind of stuff looking at it. So you told me that two and a half years ago. Yep. And I mean, granted, um, a couple months ago, there were some crews out there <laughs> surveying at the Colvert Bridge. They came out, they dug up, and then left. Request one more minute. Yes, sir. Um, so we're requesting <coughs> that to bring it to your attention to tell us the next steps forward for what we can do to make that stretch of road a little bit safer. Um, since it is nothing but houses, even though we're not deemed residential. So what do we do to slow down the traffic, to halt the traffic, reroute the traffic down that road? Um, we're this coming is, to you asking for your help. This is a safety concern, matter of life and death. We've had four, five accidents there. There's been others. There's actually been a DUI witness, a DUI stop to, in April, at about 1 o'clock in the morning. I just got home. And about one in the morning, <coughs> guy flew so, past, cop got him, went over, and actually thanked him for it. I think we've made our point that there. This is a yeah. We a I, I got a couple time. of questions. When I can, I can get to them, I'm going to let yeah. you finish, and then yeah. Please. yeah. You. First, what was your address? 1070 Brownsbury Road. Thank you. I was getting February. Okay. And our next door neighbors are Tina Adams and Doc and Adams. Doc Adams. Um, they've had quite a few in their yard as well over the years. Okay. Two things that we will do. One, um, when Greg tells you that well, that's been in engineering for two years, it has. It's actually been in the budget this year. And so what we have with the new engineer, who hopefully tonight will be giving us an update on the Hughes Road piece, will then put that in his queue to figure out where it is and what we need to do. Secondly, I will get with the police department and talk about how we make sure we monitor speed through that area until we can get for sure the bridge taken care of. And we'll get you answers back at the next city council meeting at the latest. Yes, and if sir. you'll give your, uh, I think you have um, with Dude, that, I got um, your contact information, we'll get it back to you guys too. Yes, sir. We will, I will take both of those on. We even offered for the um, police officers, by all means, to be able to sit, because they needed a safe place. I said, you can sit in the front of our yard. Okay. It doesn't bother us um, if it's going to help address that problem. Well, I will take care. I, I will take the lead on both of those from a safety standpoint and from an engineering where we are standpoint. Get back to the entire community at the next city council meeting. Get back to you guys once we have an answer. Thank you. Thank you, you, sir. you. Good. Mayor, may I add something to that? That road is very dark. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so can we also look at lighting and um, if that's part of the issue? I don't think it's always part of the issue because that – I think I saw you as I was driving over here with a black truck. Yes. Yes, I was behind you as you were surveying the area, yes. and I saw what you're talking about. And I, I was on top of the bridge, and I mm -hmm. had my blinkers on, yeah. and yes, I took pictures from the bridge. I have those. So, um, yes, I saw where the trees were damaged and um, all of that, and I, I know we all share your concerns. We will see what we can do. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Good. Thank you both. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> Anyone else? If not, we'll move forward with the Consent Agenda and Finance Committee report. Okay, Finance Committee is going to meet this month, next Tuesday, on Election Day, June 21st at 10 a.m. Um, we've also independently reviewed the items on the Consent Agenda for this week, and I move to approve. Second. 
Motion and second. Is there any discussion? If not, can I get the vote, please? Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seifert? Motion passes. Uh, next is presentation of, of reports. Um, may I add to that that um, there was a donation, $25, from Mary Fuller to the uh, Madison Senior Center. Just sorry, just wanted to highlight that. Absolutely. And I couldn't see it, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Betty usually jumps on that. I'm sorry. So uh, we'll start with the reports, and we'll start with the mayor. All right, well, a couple of things. One, um, it's always... Uh, enjoyable as a, uh, a mayor for your department heads as they meet longevity times and in this case I don't think anything's more fitting than tonight with Chief Bailey uh, it's his five-year anniversary we have his five-year pin you know uh, Miss Gary talked about the loss of life and you, when that happens in your community and in any level you know um, you feel that one of the things that I recognize, and Chief Bailey, when he came in and, and a lot of this council interviewed him, talked about was the community risk side and community risk reduction in a lot of the programs that the fire department does. You know, we talk each time I put my numbers out to the community, you know, there's architectural plan reviews, there's annual fire inspections that those guys proactively go out and do. There's so many different events that our fire department is at that in turn help us minimize community risk and then the programs that they do. And, and in so many of that times, he's led those charges and then made sure that our guys are trained. So in that fire, there was only one loss of life. Look, they, every time that they get in and do what they do, they do an amazing job. We're proud of, our, proud of our fire department, but we're really proud of Chief Bailey and his leadership and what he does. They have our full support. And uh, I wanna make sure, um, tell him how proud I am for him and especially his personal journey this year uh, it is so good to see you back at every one of these meetings with a full mustache. I'm so jealous. <laughs> and, uh, but we're very proud of you and, and your five years, Chief, and I want to give this to you. Another thing, and, and it kind of goes back. To, uh, one of the neat things about uh, being mayor, and especially in one of the ten largest cities, is you get quarterly to go and meet with your peers of the ten, uh, the big ten mayors. And I did find out we may have slipped up one notch, and, and now being number nine, that's how they have us ranked. So um, I'm kind of surprised at that, but that's okay. It just costs us a little bit more money in that whole thing. Uh, but one of the neat things that they have with the big ten mayors is we had a chance to go around and talk about our community. And three of those cities are Huntsville, Madison, and Decatur. And just being able to talk at a high level of the first five or six bullets, you know, Huntsville being named the number one city in the nation to live in, you know, the fact that Madison's the number one zip code, you know, the fact that uh, Space Command still with two reports that have come out that still deem a four-star command needs to come to Redstone Arsenal. Uh, the, the fact that we are going to land spacecraft at Huntsville International Airport and that one of the primary reasons is so many of the experiments that are manufactured and come up with are, are on the arsenal, they're going to be able to land at, at the airport and have those experiments back very quickly to get looked at. Um, uh, Amazon just announced a huge uh, piece where they're putting a bunch of stuff in space. They need a bunch of rockets. Both Aero, Aero, uh, Blue Origin and ULA are doing I mean, all that's just in this small little area. So it's really neat to be able to be at that table and be able to, to brag, not so much brag, but just say, here's what's happening in our community, and there's a lot of neat things. With that said, one of the other things that came from one of the other cities that I want to make everybody aware of and remind folks, the World Games are coming to Birmingham, and it's July 7th through the 17th. And it is, I don't even know, it's you know, like over 80 different events, everything from uh, every ball you can probably play, but sumo wrestling. It's a lot of the events that just aren't done at the Olympics but are still need someone to win a championship. Anyway, July 7th through the 17th, it's www.twg2022.com. And we want to support those folks down there for what they're doing down there because that's a big deal to host the World Games. So a couple PR things, one for a chief, and I'm done. Very good.
start with dish number one. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I forgot to mention a couple of weeks ago that Council Member Bartlett, Denzine Spears, and Mayor and I all went on a wonderful tour of the new Journey Middle School, and it's on track, and it's just going to be a fabulous addition to our community. And uh, it was great to see what uh, a high school looks like, very different than the high school that I went to uh, a few years ago. Um, wanted to also mention that several of us, uh, Mayor and uh, Council Member Denzine, went to the Memorial Day celebration that was held by the American Legion and the Bob Jones ROTC, Junior ROTC, excuse me, and um, that's one of my favorite events of the year. My dad and my father-in-law both have a brick at the, at the veterans um, area there, and I just want to thank them for them doing this for us uh, every year. This Thursday, we have our first concert at Home Place Park. It'll be this Thursday at 6 p.m. And Home Place Park, the easiest way to get there is to park at the stadium and plenty of parking there and you'll be able to see um, the amphitheater right in front of you. Uh, one of our personal favorite bands, because we have a family member in it, is playing this Thursday and that's Calypso Vision. And then there are two additional dates, July 21st, Groove is playing and August 18th, the Zooks are playing. And then at the library on June 10th, uh, E.T. is playing uh, Extraterrestrial. So you have uh, quite a few event things going on. I'm sorry, June? I'm sorry. Oh, June, I'm sorry. June 10th. We had June 10th already, Very didn't we? Time. June 24th really good movie poltergeist is playing so that that was a family favorite too and and very family friendly so um that's all i have the last thing i want to say is i do think this is megan's last meeting and what a honor and a privilege and a joy it's been and everybody's going to say the same thing you you have just been wonderful to work with the most patient woman i know the mayor's the most patient man i know you're very patient and kind and you never you know, um, rebuffed, you always had a moment for us, and I, I personally am going to miss you terribly. But I know you've got big things ahead, and, and it's an exciting step in, in your next uh, chapter of life. So we wish you well. And that's all I have. Sorry. Dish number two. I will join Mara in saying thank you so much, Megan. You have definitely been a bright spot here at City Hall, and I appreciate all of your efforts on behalf of our city and um, your patience in teaching all of us um, what we need to do and not, especially what not to do, which is equally if not more important. Mm -hmm. But um, I am so very impressed with you mm -hmm. and I appreciate it and I wish you only the very best. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was this um, past week, we had a SEDS, which is Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy meeting for Tarcog, which is a five-county um, region, and the, and the top of it stands for Top of Alabama Regional Council of Governments is what Tarcog stands for. And so what it was was a regional view of economic development and they had um, stakeholders that met at Calhoun. The mayor was there, and um, the only, well, the only mayor I recognized that was there. And <laughs> <I'm> busted in. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we had so many people that were um, all there for the same reason that they want the best for our region. And there was such a spirit of collaboration and willingness to listen that I was so very impressed, not only with our um, fellow elected officials, but our, our stakeholders that came and contributed to the meeting and gave um, insight to, um, they even had somebody like from the Housing Authority that brought that point of view. And so it was just a very, very, um, very, um, Collaborative? Yes, collaborative is the word. It was a very impressive collaboration. And I just wanted to mention that today and thank the mayor for showing up. Did you number three? I mean that in the nicest way. I know you do. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Megan, of course, I'd like to thank you. Um, I have personally, and I'll do it publicly. Um, the only other thing I have is, Chief, thank you for, for your guys. And, uh, you know, it's always. Uh, it's always not it's not good to have a loss of life but at least we didn't have quite as many 
Um, another one that I would like to mention is Mr. Elbert Balch, who was a good friend of mine and uh, also a friend of the community. He, he served on the Historic Review Commission and, um, and the Cemetery Commission. He uh, spent a lot of money downtown and spent a lot of time downtown. And uh, he also has uh, Matt Balch, which is our public defender, um, who is, is part of, you know, part of our family. And, uh, you know, one of the, one of the things that, that Elbert told, told Matt this week is, you know, Matt, they were in hospice, and he told Matt, he goes, if you're not going to go to this week's meeting, then you owe Madison one-fourth of your paycheck for the month. So that's just who Elbert was. He was fair. He was kind. And uh, the thing that, that he left us with is, you know, it doesn't cost, it's what he would say, it doesn't cost anything to be kind. So um, please keep that family in your prayers and, and keep our community in, in your prayers. That's all I have. District number five. I want to give everybody an update on an announcement we made last week about the first community meeting that we're going to be holding here at City Hall on June 22nd at 6 p.m. about the uh, transition to a council manager form of government. Uh, at that meeting, we're going to have uh, James Ross, who served on the mayor's task force, and he's going to give an abbreviated presentation that just focuses on city manager. You may recall that the task force looked also at the topic of uh, staggered terms. We're going to postpone consideration of staggered terms. It takes a different procedure uh, to get that done. And we're going to just focus on city manager and answer questions for the public. Uh, in addition, we are planning on inviting some city managers to that meeting so that you can ask questions because the questions that I've received so far online uh, with the announcement are really focused in on what does the city manager do and what does the mayor do. So we're going to hold two community meetings um, at the outset just because of those questions that have come in. The first one is on June 22nd. We are working on a date in July when we will have our own Mayor Finley and perhaps a few other mayors join us who also work in a city manager, mayor, council form of government. And so that will keep it real, let you ask questions about their roles, their responsibilities, how they got the positions that they have. And uh, we are looking forward to having that uh, here. Uh, the first meeting will be streamed. Uh, through our website, so we will be able to, um, if you are not able to attend, you can send in your questions using the link in the announcement, and we'll be doing some other um, probably promotions next week to make sure people know about that meeting and are able to come or send in their questions in advance. And Megan, best wishes on your future. You have been a delight to work with. Um, it has been my privilege to be the liaison for legal. And uh, stay in touch, okay? Yes. <laughs> and that's it. District number six. Well, I'll start with that too. <clears throat> Excuse me. Megan, you are just a delight. You always have that smile on your face. And you work so hard to bring together the advisory committee. And I think going forward that might be a legacy and I, I just appreciate all that you do thank you <clears throat> excuse me um, before I came to this meeting I was at the Board of Education meeting tonight uh, the newest member of the board was sworn in uh, Scott Newberry I wish him the best he has our support I look forward to all of the decisions that come forward from the board for the benefit of our children and they also announced that they are going to be working on a task force. After the tragedy down in Texas, I've been, I've been contacted by parents who are concerned for their safety of their children. I went and spoke with one at their home last week, and they are just torn apart with what happened, and they don't want to see it happen here. So I was thrilled tonight at the Board of Education meeting. They talked about the task force they're putting together. They're going to be looking at all the protocols that are in place. They're working with Chief Gandy. They are going to come up with what is best to protect our children. And then before school starts, they will let all the parents know so the parents can feel safe with their children. So I was, I was just thrilled to hear that tonight at the meeting. Um, also at the Senior Center, there are tons of activities going on for the actively aging 
Uh, they've got a dance going on on June 4th. Oops, she put June 4th. Must have been July. Um, also, the uh, June 4th, there's a Flag Day celebration tomorrow. Um, all the week between the 13th to the 17th, they're going to be featuring thanking your father and all that fathers mean to us. Um, there's going to be a Juneteenth celebration on June 16th, and then the 21st, it's going to be an ice cream social. So they're just working so hard to keep the seniors involved, keep it active. It's a wonderful place. Um, if you have the opportunity to go by, if you're one of those actively aging, it's just a delight to be there. <clears throat> also, the Beautification Board. On Saturday, there were six of us that went out to 90 different entrances to do the judging. You know the signs that say beautiful, this is a beautiful spot? Well, yeah, we're the people that judge that. And I just want to thank so many of the communities that do put in the hard work to make their, their community look that much nicer. And it just brings a nicer feel to the whole city of Madison. So I do want to congratulate all those that will be having a sign again. And then to those that uh, need to put a little extra work, um, I think next year everything will look a little bit better. But there are people that do pay attention to that because we believe it's important for our city to look as good as what we are because the heart of the city is amazing. And I also would like to thank Chief Bailey for your five years. You're, you're also amazing to work with. And I thank all the firefighters for all that they've had to do lately. So there's that. Um, and that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Very good. I just want to uh, say a thank you to, uh, to a Megan also. Everybody talks about how nice she is and great she is, and that's all true, but she's also a workhorse. Everybody does. I mean, I get emails from her on Saturday, Sundays, 9 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, holidays. So it's not only just uh, what a good what a good person you are and you, and you got us. It's, we're going to miss um, you always being there for us, and we really do appreciate you, Megan. Thank, thank you. On, onward and upward, my friend. Can I close out? I, you know, one of the things we're getting ready to, we have interviews in the next couple of days for your position, which we don't like. Um, but, you know, one of the things I really like about what Mary Beth a lot of times adds is if, if your employer or friends would give three words about you, what would three words be? And I think work, I, I didn't, it's two words is workhorse, but I, I just find someone that just has such a strong work ethic. But the other two I wrote down were professional and positive. Mm -hmm. And this community over the last, you know, when we came in in 2016, you know, the stability that we needed in that office, you immediately gave, and there has been a difference made since that time, and it's huge. And so it is a big loss for us, but thank goodness you're still in the county. Mm -hmm. It's about the only way we can bear it, and I, and I still want to go fight a couple of them, but that's okay, we won't, and we'll just be partners with them. But you have made a big difference, and we are really proud of you that you're headed that way, and glad to have someone that we now can call over there that will answer the phone a little bit more quickly. So, <laughs> thank you. Very good. There are no board or committee appointments. We have a couple of uh, public hearings, and we'll start with you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have one alcohol public hearing this evening, Luigi's Italian Grill Incorporated. It's 7559 Highway 72 West Suite C11 and C12 has requested an honor off-premise beer and wine license. Uh, Best way to describe this location would be the southeast corner of Nansen Highway 72. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a new request for alcohol at this location, and uh, everything's in order for this to be considered. Okay, I'd like to open the uh, public hearing to see if anyone would like to address Councilor Mayor. If not, we'll close the public hearing and ask for our motion. Move to approve. Second. Motion to second. Is there any discussion? I just want to say I've been twice, and it is fabulous. If you have not yet been to Luigi's, go. It is absolutely delicious and such a, a positive uh, restaurant in our area. You know, everybody's always, you know, no more fast food, no more chains. They are wonderful. Food is delicious. Service is spectacular. I cannot high, highly recommend them enough. And now there will be a wine menu. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and can I get the vote, please? Councilmember Robleski? Aye. Councilmember Spears? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Councilmember Powell? Aye. Councilmember Bartlett? Aye. Councilmember Denzine? 
Council Member Seifert. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, the second one is uh, about the weed liens. Uh, so during the summer of 2021 uh, to 22, pursuant to the city's local weed abatement act, act number 2016-205, the city uh, has cut overgrown grass and weeds on these properties. And now it's time for the city council to consider um, uh, the city's cost as weed liens on the properties. We've been presented with itemized reports showing the cost of removing these weeds. Uh, the reports have been previously sent to the owners of, of those lots. So now we'll open the public hearing and see if there's an owner of this property that would like to address mayor council. Or is there anyone else that would like to address mayor mm -hmm. council? If not, we'll close the public hearing and we will ask for a motion. Move to approve. Second. Motion is second. Is there any discussion? I just want to say one thing. This property, it, it is kind of technically 133 because it goes 131, 135, and it's an empty lot. And ever since I came into office six years ago, every year we, we have this address. And I, I just want to thank building for code enforcement. Um, the grass is as tall as a podium. I appreciate everything you do. I wish there was an alternative to get the lots on each side and maybe that's something very low priority but maybe something that we can look at where we can um, look at a way to take this burden off of code enforcement and put it on the adjoining homeowners just, just any, a thought any other discussion if not can i get the vote please council member robleski aye council member spears aye council president shaw aye Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seifert? And motion passes. Uh, we'll move into the uh, department reports and we'll start with engineering. All right, I've got just one item uh, on the engineering report. It's resolution number 2022-162R, approving professional services agreement with Con Consulting Construction Engineering, LLC, for electrical engineering services for the Oakland Springs Stormwater Pump Station in the amount of $2,000 to be paid from departmental budget. Move to approve. Second. Motion is second. Is there any discussion? Can, can I get the vote, please? Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seifert? Motion passes. Uh, before I go, I just want to offer you guys a little update on uh, Hughes Road uh, widening project. We, uh, you might have noticed there were some crews out there working today. We had a concrete, concrete contractor to come out to start working on some of the connections for the drainage um, systems out there that need to be done. Um, hoping to get some crews out here to lay some pipe up by Eastview Road so we can get that uh, intersection rolling again and then get some crews out here to do some road widening projects in the, in the coming weeks. Uh, also part of that, get some uh, seating done on the east side. So we've got, we've got some, don't have some hard schedules yet. They're still getting some revised pricing back to us, but we've talked about a, a general schedule trying to get what, you know, where we can get started and get going um, you know, sooner rather than later. But uh, we had to do a little redesign took out the sidewalk for now. That was the cause of most of the con uh, conflicts with the utilities. Um, hopefully with some of those, some of the money we get back from savings on that, we can use towards uh, you know, updated pricing, you know, since this contract was signed back in 2019. So there's been obviously some, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, you know how that goes. Um, possibly we can do the sidewalk thing later in the future. Uh, but for now, we want to get this project going, get the traffic flowing. Very good. Any other questions for me? Thank you. On behalf of the people living along Hughes, thank you so much oh, for getting this moving. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. And I think one of the things with all the utility conflicts, there's, I mean, this takes up 75, 80 percent of I mean, a large amount of them we're talking. Oh, yeah. Right, right. We, we, we looked at a couple of different options just to try to keep the, the, the big safety issues out there are driver expectations. We've got all these barrels out here. We want to make sure that the lanes are lining up with the signals when we get these these pedestrian areas back, back opened up. And, you know, we could wait several years while we try to procure um, materials and go through redesigns of water lines and various other utilities. This is a good way for us to get going on it, get traffic flowing, get the get that particular um, pedestrian crossing and signal rolling for the next school year, that kind of stuff. 
So that was our priority here. And if we want to look at the sidewalk on that east side going forward, it's something that we can do, do, do a little bit of a better job doing some surveying, figuring out where the utilities are and how we can kind of deal with those when we get to that point. Mm -hmm. A lot more, fact, I say fact, but nail down even more next council meeting and we'll just keep going from there. It is their number one priority that they're working I'll on right now. We'll provide updates every, yep. every council meeting. Right. You don't want to overpromise. Yeah. Thank All you, right. Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Police. Good evening. I've got uh, two items for you. First is resolution number 2022-163-R, which is to authorize an amendment to the Memorandum of Understanding for Participation in the North Alabama Drug Task Force. Uh, that's an organization that we've been a part of for a while. There's new verbiage and it allows for the FBI to get involved with it as well. So that's what that one is. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any discussion? And can I get the vote, please? Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Seaford? Motion passes. All right, and number two is resolution number 2022-170R, which is authorizing a grant application for bulletproof vests. Uh, this is a grant to the Department of Justice, a 50-50 matching grant. Uh, we're looking for 16 vests this year, I believe. Uh, cost for the city is $7,152, and then the DOJ will pick up the other half of that, too. Have <coughs> to approve. Second. Motion is second. Is there any discussion? No, thank you. No. Can, can, can we get the vote, please? Council Member Powell? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Seaford. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Beth, with a long list tonight. No, it's not. <laughs> but a lot of first readings. A lot of first readings. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. All right. Your first item, three items are uh, first readings. So you have proposed ordinance 2022-158, and this is to vacate a portion of utility and drainage easement. In the backyard, um, you can see that shaded blue area. Somebody's wanting to put a pool in their backyard, and most of their backyard is in an easement. Uh, so um, at your next meeting, we'll be asking you to approve the vacation of that. All of the respective departments and agencies have signed off on this. And this is on Cliffworth Place. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Your next item, also a first reading, is proposed ordinance number 2022-159, and this is um, a vacation of a um, an old, um, well, it used to be a parcel. You can see that little triangular area. Can I just point it out right, whoops, right there for you? This little triangle right there used to be a parcel, and. Um, that parcel, it was a remnant parcel um, that was just kind of floating out there in space. And so we've, uh, the property owners have kind of come to an agreement. Um, that parcel has now been um, made a part of the larger parcel to the south. Um, it's right adjacent to 565. And so um, this is really just to get rid of those little easements that are around the, uh, the triangle, uh, the two sides of the triangle, because they're no longer needed. Ready for the next? All righty. So we have proposed ordinance 2022-160, and again, another vacation of easement. And so um, this um, property is just across the street, so north is going to be uh, on the left-hand side. I don't know if you can all ro rotate that or not, but um, there's two easements on this property. One is very large. It goes like all, all of this. It's all connected as an easement. And then there's this other one right there. So this is all connected together, and then this is the other one. And um, these are just old, you know, utility and drainage easements. There's been a project approved um, for part of this parcel, and this is just clean up so that that project could move forward. Um, I will, <coughs> I'll leave it at that. Any questions? <laughs> okay. All right. So your next item we do need to, to take action on, hopefully, is proposed ordinance 2022-147, and 
this is to uh, vacate a utility and drainage easement and also an ingress and egress easement. This is at the corner of Town Madison Boulevard and Zierit Road. This is where Starbucks is being constructed. These are old easements based upon, you know, what was expected, you know, 20 years ago, and we don't need them anymore. So we're asking for your approval. Move to approve. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? Can I, can I get the vote, please? Council yes. Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council President Sh Shaw? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seaford? And motion passes. Thank you. And the last uh, planning item is resolution 2022-164-R. This is a change order. Um, we don't have an exhibit for this, but um, this is a change order uh, related to uh, the ballpark uh, to a Toyota field for field replacement. You'll recall back in December of last year, you approved a contract for $49,000. That was the city's contribution to um, some field and drainage improvements. Um, the project's been delayed due to cost increases that we're seeing in the construction industry, um, cost of labor, et cetera. Um, there is a change order request from the uh, River Region, which is the um, firm that would be doing all of this work, for $87,000. And so we are asking for your approval of that. We do have funds available in our maintenance fund for the ballpark to cover this cost. Move to approve. Second. Motion is second. Is there any discussion? When is this field being replaced? It will be done in October after the football game. Oh, good. Good timing. We have a short window, but right. Um, right. all parties think that it is doable. Okay. Can I get the vote, please? Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seaford? Our motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Beth. Corey, come <laughs> on down. Good evening. I have resolution 2022 161-R approving professional services agreement with Croy Engineering for design and pre-construction services for Palmer Park update in the amount of $101,304. Uh, uh, this is for the second phase of Palmer Park uh, master plan. Uh, this includes a fourplex at the front of the park and a redirection of the road in addition of some parking. Right work to help us come up with an actual design. Move to approve. Second. Motion and second. Is there any discussion? If not, can we get the vote, please? Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seaford? My motion passes. Thank you, Thank you Corey. Corey. If we don't do this one, does she have to stay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can continue it. You move to continue it. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you all so much for your kind words earlier. It really means so much to me. Um, I never imagined eight years ago when I came to City Hall as a legal intern that I would have the opportunity to do this job. And I have all of you to thank for that, and especially the mayor. Um, as, and I have all of you to thank for my next new opportunity, too. So thank you so much. Um, and I'm so glad that it's not goodbye. It's just see you around, because I'll be able to look out for Madison in my new job at the county. So thank you all so much. And just don't hesitate to reach out if you ever need me. Thank you. Um, and to conclude, I have one item for tonight, and this is Resolution 2022-166-R. This is to authorize a permissive use agreement with Madison Utilities for the park property located at Windstone Park, which is pictured on the screen above. Uh, this is located in the Windstone subdivision south of Morning Vista Drive, which is close to Horizon Elementary School. And Madison Utilities has asked for this agreement because they have an existing sewer lift station on the property and they want to add an additional service building. This request is in line with the, the authority that they have under their franchise agreement. We would propose that we deed this property to Madison Utilities, but there's a deed restriction that limits this, um, that 
um, provided that this was dedicated as a neighborhood park a long time ago. Um, now we're at the point where the rec department does not need this as a park and they also are spending a good bit to maintain it. Um, so they're proposing to offload it because it's not proposed for public or municipal purposes, but we're not in a position to deed it just yet. So we're proposing this permissive use agreement to allow Madison Utilities the use of the property and to save some money for the city as well. I have to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Can I get the vote, please? Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council President Shaw? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seaford? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any miscellaneous business or announcements? Mm -hmm. Not. Move to adjourn? Move to adjourn. So be it. Thank you. Got to get home watching watch them, all the Tigers play back tomorrow night. Man, I was down there with Ron Andrews yesterday. Mm -hmm. he was, he was one more. And this morning. While Maddox is sitting over there at the table, and he doesn't, he, we're all eating, and he goes, "Hey, um, you know, we do several different things, like with the fifth grade here. Um, we'll teach."